So after all these basic concepts are introduced, the network, the switches can calculate the spanning tree. So the calculation process is like this. First, the spanning tree protocol needs to select a root bridge, right? We have already said that there is only one root bridge to be selected. And we will select the one with the smallest number of priority. And if the priority is the same, we need to select the one with the smallest math address. So here in this example, we will select switch one as the root bridge. Next, we need to select the root pot for every bridge. So for every bridge, we will have several different paths to connect it to the root. Then uh, the path with the smallest root path cost actually is selected. And the pod which is in the path with the smallest path cost actually is selected as the root pod. Okay, because here, for example, this cost is 50, this cost is 200, this cost is also 200. So look at this switch. This is the best path. So this is the root pot. And for this switch, here is the best path compared with this one. So this here is the root pot. This is the second step. Okay. And if there are the two paths have the same path cost, then we will select the one with the smallest PID. Okay, that is the root pot selection for non-root bridge. Okay, now let's look at the step three. The step three actually is that for every link, we need to select the designated pot. Okay, so uh, how to select the designated pot? Actually, you need to compare the path cost also. So for example, for this link, we have two pot. This pot directly connected to the root. So the path cost is zero. And this pot actually has uh, 50. So this one is smaller. So we set this one as the designated pot. Similarly, for this one is the designated pot. So typically for the pods on the root bridge, all the pot will be the designated pot. And then let's compare this link. Okay, for this link, we have two pods. And for this pods, we have 50 pass cost. For this one, we have 200 pass cost. So this one is smaller. So we select this one as the designated pod. So that's all for step three. And after that, we can see that almost all the pods have been allocated as the root pod or designated pod. And for other pods, which is not root pod nor the designated pod, we will call it the non-designated pod. And we will block the non-designated pod. So when this pod is blocked, this link is also blocked. So the loop topology will become a tree topology with the switch one as the tree's root. So finally, the layer two loop has been eliminated. So that's all for the STP calculation. So if we summarize the steps, actually you can see that uh, we need to first select the root and then select the root pod and then select the designated pod and finally block the non-designated pod. So that's all for the STP calculation. Finally, let's look at the uh, pod states. Actually, each pod will working at several different states uh, shown in the figure. So first, if the pod is failed or it is closed, it is down, then we call it the disabled. Then if uh, it's enabled, but the STP protocol uh, finds that this block is a non-designated pod and should be blocked, then we call the status is blocked. And the blocked pod cannot send or receive any service data frame or learn the MAC address, but it can listen to the uh, BPDUs because they need to listen uh, whether the network is uh, changed. And then we have the listening state. 
So when the STP find that the status should be changed from the block into a root pod or designated pod, then the status will be changed from blocking to listening. So in listening state, they can send or receive uh, PD BPDUs. Here, they cannot send, they can only receive. Okay, but in listening state, the switch cannot send any data frames, send or receive any data frames. The next one is the learning. So after 15 seconds, the state of the switch can change from listening to learning. So in learning, actually they can receive the data packet so they can learn the MAC address. And finally, it's in forwarding. So in forwarding state, they can both uh, listening and sending the service data frames. Okay. So the uh, STP pod state transition will be like this. Originally, if the link is down, then as in disabled state, then uh, if the pod is initialized or activated, then they will automatically enter the block stage. And then if they are elected as the root pod or the designated pod, they will enter the listening. They can hear, they can send and receive the BPDUs, but they cannot send or receive service data. And then if the forward data, forward delay timer expires, then the state can change from listening to learning. In this state, they can receive the service data to learn the MAC address, but they cannot send. And finally, if another forward delay timer expires, they can finally enter the forwarding state. In this state, they can both receive and send the service data. At every state, if there is a link failure, then they will change back to the disabled state. And at these three states, if there is a if the pod is no longer the root pod or designated pod, then it should come back to the block state and they should still uh, waiting and only hear the BPDU until they are selected as the uh, root or designated again. So that's all for the pod state transition. And actually here you can see that before coming into the forwarding state, they need to wait for two delay. This is to prevent from the switch, frequently switch between the disabled state and the forwarding state. 